Welcome to Inside Europe. We are not in Brussels, we're in Strasbourg this week uh, as it's the plenary session. And joining me are three MEPs, uh, Stephen Wolfe, Martina Anderson and Jean Lambert. Now let's talk about the, the migrant crisis as it's called by some. This is, uh, if I give you some facts, 69 people have drowned this year trying to reach Spain and 6,000 have arrived this month. This isn't just Spain, Italy has having significant problems to do with numbers coming onto their shores. Uh, and the solution to this doesn't look like it's in sight. So Stephen, in terms of what the EU are doing, in terms of what the EU as a collective body is doing, is it a complete failure? Well, I think it was a failure at the beginning, absolutely, because they had no strategy no plan and no bodies really enabled to kind of prevent the situation of people dying in, in, in the seas as they were trying to get over, managing those people as they arrived in places like Greece or Italy. And they have, I'll be fair on them, they have tried to move somewhat over the past year. But do I believe that they've managed to significantly achieve uh, the results of improving the situation as a whole? I, I, I don't think so. Well, I mean, the, the Italian Prime Minister, Paolo uh, Gentiloni, has accused the EU of looking the other way. So it's quite a stark um, you know, comment to make, really feeling like they've been abandoned on this issue. Um, Jean, you know, do you see this as, an EU, as a failure of the EU? They are, states are looking the other way, particularly those states who don't have southern shores. Well, I think part of what you have to look at with the Italian Prime Minister at the moment is there's an Italian general election coming up. Nevertheless, apart from that, it is true that a number of EU member states have looked away. That the EU as a whole has tried to put a, you know, put a system in place, you know, relocation of um, people arriving so that there's more of that sort of effort sharing and so on. Whereas some member states have quite simply said we're not doing it. Well, I mean, what, what member states are you talking about here? Well, you have, well, the UK didn't was saying no to relocation. Um, you have what's called the Visegrad countries, you know, like Poland and the like, saying that they're not going to participate. And others who are participating and the speed is now beginning to pick up in terms of the relocation effort. But it, it has been slow. There's a lot of work still to do on it. And, you, you know, this is not a problem that's going to end soon when you look at what's happening elsewhere in the world. I mean, Martina, the argument would be is that if you look at the numbers of people coming over, the number of people who are drowning, who you know, terrible things are happening to, the, to these people, there isn't time to sort of be considering it and, and waiting to do action. And, and do you think the EU you know, is, is doing enough? Is there a plan in place to actually correct what Italy and Spain are obviously becoming very frustrated about? I think this is Europe's sink and shame. Um, I think it's the worst humanitarian crisis um, of our lifetime. And in years to come, grandchildren and others will ask each and every one of us, what did you do about it? This is about, for instance, I believe the approach taken by the EU is about keeping people out, not keeping them safe. We need safe and legal access. I think it's absolutely appalling that the Mediterranean has turned into a floating cemetery. And meanwhile, you have discussions about what can be done and what should be done. We were at a Libe committee, a Civil Liberty and Justice Home Affairs committee last week, and there was a presentation from a forum of NGOs, Frontex Forum, and they give us some shocking, appalling statistics. There's been 2,005 people have died this year alone, drowned, perished in that sea. Uh, but what would you do about it? Because, the, the, you know, the rhetoric is, yeah, something needs to be done and it's a shame and it's a t what is happening is a catastrophe or humanitarian crisis. What would you actually do about it? What should, in your view, in Sinn Féin's view, the EU be doing about it in, we, in practical there, there, terms? There is safe and legal access needed. This isn't about shooting people in boats. This isn't about giving and pouring millions into organisations, whether they're in Libya or elsewhere to actually try to keep people out. This is about stopping the dropping bombs in Syria. There's a number of people getting on these boats who are doing so because they're fleeing from persecution. And let us be very clear, the vast majority of these people just want to go home. They want to live safe in their own country. So this is also about tackling the foreign policies of many of the EU countries that have all 
who are involved in, for instance, taking on wars in the Middle East so, so if, and if, in North Africa. Just to convert, so if the foreign policy was to change of certain EU states, you would you you would then you know think that there would be a massive reduction. Oh, without of, doubt, of course there would be a massive reduction. Of that, there is no doubt. The evidence is there to prove it. Of the amount of people we have gone to these refugee camps, we've seen these people, we have talked to these people. I went to Syria. I went. I went to Jordan. I went into a rat-infested camp, and I've talked to people. And the, the barbaric um, conditions that uh, that um, resulted in them having to flee their homes. Now some of their stories were unimaginable, and you couldn't even repeat some of the, the experiences that they have had. I think, without doubt, collectively, the relocation, reunification. But we need to look at the foreign policy, and we need to look at the reasons okay. why these people are leaving. Stephen, we'll come back on that. Foreign policy is is at the heart of this issue. It's, it's one of the issues. It's absolutely, in terms of our, the illegal wars against Iraq, was very clear that was going to cause a problem. But in terms of foreign policy, where I agree uh, to the extent that we also should look at trade. And I've always been a big active uh, campaigner against EU trade policy in the way that we look at, at tariffs with other African nations. Uh, you can take at coffee, you can take at chocolate, you can take at the fisheries in relation to those in Somalia. Well, we put ta good tariffs to Madagascar, but we put bad tariffs against Somalia. See, so also imposing large costs to people in those countries which are driven millions of people in Africa that want to leave their countries to come up to the EU to seek what they regard as a better life. That is an aspect of foreign policy that is wrong, but I've always called for that Europe cannot do this on this on their own. This should be an international conference. I've been doing so and calling for this since mid-2014, in which we try and address all of these issues. What's an what's in international? What's America? What's you know? What, what, are, what are the countries outside the outside Europe going to really be politically concerned about when it's nothing to do with them? They would probably argue this is a European problem. No, it's absolutely not. Uh, nothing to do with them. Trade is to do with the rest of the world. Wars are to do with the rest of the world. But and in humanitarian the issues, humanitarian humanitarian issues don't die and end at borders. We cannot put our head in our sands, but we must also make a clear distinction, as I've always said, between those of economics and those of genuine asylum. Jean, one of the things which Italy has suggested is it might close its ports to aid agencies who are going out and rescuing migrants who, who do the crossing and are obviously unsuccessful. The argument being that it is in a perverse way fueling people smugglers, people making a living out of there is even a suggestion that deliberately flimsy boats, because they're telling the people who are being transported, don't worry, if you do start sinking, you're going to get rescued anyway. Do you think that that is a, is a wise move for Italy to do? Obviously, it's, it's under immense strain and it's doing this out of almost an act, you could argue, of desperation to get the EU to notice. But it, you know, is, it, is, it in your, is it an ethical, is it moral a move to make? No, it's certainly not an ethical move to make. And the, the idea that somehow this is, this is a pull factor, I think, is also something that people really need to get their heads around. You know, that people, that you, you can argue that trafficking is actually, you, you know, it, it's almost, for, for those that, who understand the language and market response, there's a huge demand there for people who want to move, and they will move and people will find new routes, we've seen this, whether it's, you know, it used to be the Canary Islands was the way in, you know, things change, the routes shift. But if so they, do, people you, do you find believe Italy would even do that? If, if I find they... it very, I, I doubt that Italy will do it. I think that the Italian government actually, over the last, you know, sort of few years has been exceptional in what it has tried to do in Italy. I think that what they're trying to do now is to say, to, to make other member states realise that they're, are consequences of this and for them to do more and I would hope that you know you'd be looking at the government of France well, we do actually stepping up and doing it its own you know well, well Martina perhaps we'll get that. Is, it, could put that to you is that is it a hollow threat from Italy that it would close its borders to aid agencies rescuing migrants under this assumption that it, that it is fueling in some way the movement of people well, we think if we're going to tackle um, what you were talking about smugglers most of them smugglers are in the EU mm. that's where they're coming from so, you know, if this concern that you're going to fuel that, then, then you know, so tackle it at source. But you also have to deal with the fact. You know, I don't differentiate between the economic migrants the way that Steve does. I mean, we mm. come from a country that, um, in terms of hunger and poverty and a famine, that if it ha we had coffin ships 
before they have even been talked about here. And if hadn't it been for places like America, and they had systems in place when people from Ireland were leaving Ireland in their droves, the population of Ireland has never been able to return. Well, sure, this is to about what practicality. This is about so, Italy saying the numbers we literally cannot cope. Yes, of course, and that is why we need to provide ways of assisting countries that is under the kind of pressure, whether it's Italy and Greece, but we also have to put a, a, a system in place that's about keeping these people safe. And I say to you, and I agree with, with a lot of what Stephen has said with regards to trade, it's not, we, we don't agree with a lot, I have to say we sit in the far end of the chamber, but I agree with what he's said about foreign policies and trade, and it's not just a European policy, a, a problem, this is a global problem mm -hmm. and this is something that involves all of us wherever they are and I say in terms of Ireland we have to and I, the Irish and the people of Ireland and the government of Ireland has to do much much more than what it is doing it's a shame that it isn't actually taking more action okay. and trying to keep people safe. Stephen very very quickly it, it, should Italy be listened to in this in this closing ports ultimatum is seen I, by some I, in the UK press? Look we've got, we've got to listen to Italy because they've been bearing the brunt and, and I'm afraid they'll fa face huge problems during the rest of this summer and I suspect next year too. Okay we're gonna to have to leave that there. Stephen, uh, Martina and Jean thank you very much for coming on.